how can the U.S. stop the killing of more innocent people, civilians, on both sides of that border? So you have a war that's going on, and you're probably going to have to let this play out. There is no hatred like the Palestinian hatred of Israel and Jewish people, and probably the other way around also. I don't know. You know, It's not as obvious, but probably that's it, too. So sometimes you have to let things play out, and you have to see where it, where it ends. Just let it play out. Donald Trump's assessment of the Israel-Hamas war in an interview with Univision. Joining the conversation this hour, we have Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today, Susan Page, Pulitzer Prize-winning associate editor of The Washington Post, Bob Woodward, chief Washington mm -hmm. correspondent for Bloomberg TV, Anne Marie Horner, and staff writer for The Atlantic, Frank Four. So that's one way to look at the war, Joe, was just let it happen, let it play out, and see where the chips fall. On the other hand, you have President Biden putting some pressure, apparently successful, on Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu to have these daily pauses now to get right. humanitarian aid into Gaza for the civilians of Gaza. Well, yeah, I mean, we can add this to the bizarre, the long list of bizarre things Donald Trump has said, from praising Hezbollah to now saying, huh, just let them kill each other, see how it ends up. Also, there was this bizarre moral equivalency there. Frank? Mm. Yeah, well, that's run through where, a lot where, of it. He goes, prob he, he talks about how Palestinians hate Israelis. And then he goes, probably the other way around there, too. Let's just let it play itself out. Right. Which is literally Donald Trump saying, just let them kill each yeah. other. And then we'll figure out yeah. who's on top. Right. It's the Middle East. It's the cycles of violence. Not our problem. Who cares? It really does stand in direct contrast to the way that Joe Biden has approached this, obviously, where his strategy, first of all, there's yeah. Biden's own Zionism, which clearly has infused his approach to everything. His commitment to Israel is deep-seated and real. And then there's also the, the psychological acuity that has also informed his approach, that he understands the psychology of a people who have just been attacked and that the sympathy that they need and also the ways in which you build up emotional capital and trust and then you spend it right. when you want to accomplish your strategic objectives. And, and, and sending Anthony Blinken all over the Middle East. Yeah. Having your national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, working around the clock, calling everybody else. Actually, Biden's doing Henry, the exact opposite of just kind of letting things play themselves out. I mean, that's you talk about chaos. That's telling Netanyahu, bomb anybody, anytime, anywhere. Hamas, you do what you want to do. And we'll just come at the end after everybody's been shot up and killed. It's insanity. Well, President Biden is exerting a lot of political capital on this and a lot of time on this, not just Secretary Blinken to frenetic diplomacy almost in the Middle East with the Israelis and also Ar other Arab leaders. President getting on the phone with Benjamin Netanyahu. Obviously, we're seeing these pauses. It didn't go as far as the Americans wanted, but the Israelis are taking into account. But we have a new poll out. And I have to say that when you look at Israel... Ukraine, China, right. all this political capital the president is using, it ranks in terms of important issues far down the list, 3%, right. 1%. For Americans for next year, it continues to come back to the economy. Uh